Look, let's be honest, keyboard and mouse is by far the hardest input to learn in Fortnite, and your settings can have a huge impact on your overall game performance. What's up, Pro Guides fam? I'm Kangas, I'm a PC gamer, and today I'm gonna be telling you the best keyboard and mouse sensitivity and settings to make sure that you dominate your games. Let's get into it. After playing a couple games of Fortnite Season 5, I bet you guys could already tell that the meta has changed a lot. This season's trend seems to be vaulting the pump shotgun back and forth, and that's exactly what we saw this season. Now that the pump is vaulted, being accurate and smart with your shots is even more important, especially with a tack or charged shotgun. A tack shotgun does very minimal damage compared to the pump, so hitting more pellets is crucial in winning fights. Along with attack, the charge is a do or die type of gun, and fighting can be really problematic if you miss your shots. To counter this, having a low to medium sensitivity is very important for playing to the best of your potential. High sensitivities may have its pros and cons, but having the ability to adjust to your gun's needs will lead to more success. In Chapter 2, Season 5, having low to medium sensitivities are definitely the most optimal for competitive gameplay. Going forward, to avoid confusion, all of these sensitivities will be corresponding with 800 dpi, which is your mouse's raw sensitivity output of Fortnite. Keeping your X and Y sensitivity at a low to medium range is the best choice, and is the reason why most pros do the same. A perfect sensitivity that many pros use is 6.5% on both their X and Y axes. This is considered the perfect sensitivity because it is right between the low and medium range, and allows pros like Booga to have the perfect mix of fast mechanics and accurate aim. Scope and targeting sensitivity varies along many pros and preferences, but keeping it around 30-40% to 40 is the most optimal way to track your opponents perfectly. With this sensitivity, you can easily laser players out of the sky, or if they're moving quickly. This also allows you to have better shotgun aim when aiming down sights, and overall just allows you to hit more damage. Just like your X and Y sensitivities, keeping both numbers at the same percentage is better than having separate sensitivities, but can also be a preference depending on your playstyle and capability. Another small part in the sensitivity section that has absolutely no role in your gameplay is the ignore gamepad input and the lock input on your mouse. Just keep those both on, just in case you have a controller connected simultaneously. Also keep your aircraft sensitivity at 100%, just in case planes are added back to competitive modes. And keep your inverted controls off, no one likes those. If you do, you're weird. To narrow down on the perfect sensitivity, copying a pros can be very useful, but pros are always looking to play at their best, and their settings are tailored to help them do so. But keep in mind, changing it to your preference is the key to improving and playing at your best. Don't feel that you need to clone someone else exactly, as everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. Make sure to use all of our tips and recommendations to help you find the perfect sensitivity and utilize pro guides to the fullest. If you're still struggling with this, make sure to go check out ProGuides.com. We got tons of coaches that will walk you through this. While you're there, also check out Clix's new master course right now. It's incredible. All right, back to the video. Having the perfect keybinds is something that a lot of players misunderstand when they first start playing on keyboard and mouse. A huge mistake I see a lot of players make is they use keybinds that are just too close to each other on the keyboard, rather than keybinds that are fully optimal. When having keybinds that are really close to each other, it's likely that you'll have the same finger accidentally press them all at one point or another in a really clutch moment. This may seem silly, but it definitely limits the way you edit and your movement while building. To have the perfect keybinds, use keybinds that allow you to move around and build at the same time. This allows your mechanical skill to be at its fullest and makes sure that you'll never lose momentum when engaging in a build-heavy fight. As of now, the best way that I find to have optimal keybinds is by putting your walls and ramps on your side mouse buttons. This allows you to have more space on your keyboard and help your fingers move across your keyboard smoothly. The reasons most pros put their wall and ramp on their mouse button is because this allows you to jump, move around, crouch, and pull out your pickaxe while building. And depending on your edit bind, put your floor to C or F and your cone to left shift. Along with this, changing your edit bind to E or F is definitely the move, as those two are easily reachable. Put your trap bind to T as it's the closest bind right next to your reload. Along with this, change your ping bind to X as you'll still have an extra bind left to use. After just playing a couple hours on these binds, you'll probably notice a huge difference in how easily you can build, strafe, and edit simultaneously. You just gotta get used to the different controls. For an easier way to copy down these settings, pause right now, look at the image, and then click play when you're ready. Your weapon keybinds don't usually affect you too much, but always try to switch off the number keys. After copying down these binds, you have many keybinds that you can still use. Like normal, keeping your pickaxe bound to 1 is fine, and you can choose to use 2, 3, 4, and 5 for your next slots. However, you still have a lot of extra keybinds, so put your last slot at V and your fourth slot at G. 
This allows you to press every bind efficiently and helps you arrange your weapons in any way of importance that you want. Just remember though, further in the video, we will be showing you guys some bind tips that remove your scroll wheel completely. So make sure you're used to pressing weapon binds instead of scrolling. Weapon binds don't affect you too much and you can definitely adjust each one to your preferences as long as you don't need to scroll. Along with the normal keybinds, there are many extra keybinds you need to use for both competitive and creative gameplay. First up is the best advantage you can have over a controller player, scroll wheel reset. Say that five times fast, I bet you can't. Scroll wheel reset is the fastest way to reset your builds and allows you to reset multiple builds by just scrolling down. To use scroll wheel reset, use your secondary keybind for your building edit and change it to the scroll wheel down or up. For now, I recommend scroll wheel down. After, just change your secondary bind for reset building edit to scroll wheel down as well, and that's it. For a more in-depth video on using scroll wheel reset, check out the video in the description down below. In our main keybind section, you may be wondering what bind to change your use keybind to after using E as your edit bind, but don't fear, we have the perfect solution for it. Scroll wheel pickup is a huge advantage that almost every pro uses, especially after Stark Industries was in the game. This allows you to pick up every single item in a split second, just by scrolling repeatedly. To use scroll wheel pickup as your bind, just change your secondary bind for use to scroll wheel up. After doing that, just remember to keep scrolling up when 50-50 in a chest or battling your teammate and stealing all their loot. As we move backwards to our settings tab, there's many settings that you need to enable. First off, turn on sprint by default, as it allows you to sprint at all times and more importantly allows your hand to move freely. Also, turn on auto open doors. This setting allows you to walk through doors without actually having to use any binds, and it definitely saves you time. Once you got these set, turn on sort consumables to the right, but make sure that you're used to putting all your consumables on the right side of your inventory slots. As soon as you pick up a consumable, they automatically get sorted to the rightmost side, which trust me, saves you a lot of time. The final settings you should try to use is confirm edit on release. This setting is niche and fully a preference, and can mess with your crosshair placement if used incorrectly. Edit on release saves time, but can also be tricky to learn at first, so take your time with this one. Well, that's it for the video. If you try out these key bindings and you're still having some trouble, be patient. It's a lot to learn and a lot to get used to, especially if you're coming over from controller to keyboard and mouse. If you like the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We're so close to a million subs, and if we get there, I promise you we'll do the story of Keith Allen. It's coming, so share with your family, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.